Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast episode 86, 87. Welcome everyone, welcome to new and to returning viewers. I'm so happy to have you here joining me on YouTube and um, yeah, spending some time with me and my knitting and other crafts. My name is Hannah and you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry as Rose Hip Chick. We have a Ravelry group and you can find that by searching for Rose Hip Knits podcast in the groups tab on Ravelry. Uh, please come and join us there. We're having a knit long happening at the moment. It's the 2019 Aussie Dyer Sock Along. It's a um, year long knit along and it's not only for socks, it's for any items knit out of Australian and New Zealand indie dyed yarn. So please go and check that out on Ravelry. We're having a lot of fun and we're just a couple of ways a couple of days away from the first drawing of prices from the finished object thread okay so I'm Hannah I'm recording this podcast from northern Tasmania in Australia I'm a Swedish expat and I live here with my two daughters and my husband and um, today I'm recording from my studio and um, I've just reorganized a few things in here this is where I do most of my work for my uh, indie dyeing business, Rose Hip Island. You can find my hand dyed yard on Etsy. So today I thought we'd do things a little bit differently. I think I'm going to head straight into knitting content because my episodes lately have been so long and I find that I ramble on in the start of the episode so this time I thought I'm just going to cut myself short and I want to head straight on to talking about my knitting because really that's what it's all about in this podcast so yes that's what we'll do maybe I'll have some additional stuff to talk about towards the end of the podcast but knitting I have had two weeks since my last episode and I have had Lots of time, because of various reasons, but lots of time to get really into my knitting and my craft and I have really enjoyed it and I want to share it with you. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so last time we spoke, last time I spoke, <laughs> I had something that was almost finished and that was my the Starfall sweater. And now it is actually finished, finished, finished. And this is it. This is Starfall by Jennifer Steingas. And I knit this out of some Rauma, a Norwegian yarn. It's their three ply streaky yarn. I spoke about this quite a bit in previous episodes, but I all the colours in the yoke I had. Um, in my stash since previously and then the grey one that I used for the main colour was an addition to my stash at Christmas time which made me able to knit this beautiful colourwork jumper. It has um, colourwork at the bottom and on the sleeves. I had problems with this part rolling up but the washing and blocking I think helped it mostly so it's, it's fine now. The colour work really came out beautiful after blocking. One modification I did was that um, with the colour in the shards, um, I used the green in this bit and that green was then meant to be where I've used the charcoal grey here. So really the charcoal grey and the green are meant to be opposite in the yoke if they were going to be um, as in the pattern but I wanted to have quite a bit of the green so I did it this way and I'm really happy with it so that's that one I do have quite a bit of leftovers not jumpers worth um, but I have still uh, some black that I didn't use at all I have uh, quite a bit of the charcoal uh, I think 50 grams of the green left and then I think 50 grams of the grey so that would be enough for mittens or something like that super happy with that um, 
I really recommend the pattern and I've actually pur purchased another I think two patterns from Jennifer Steingal so the small color work jumpers um, in my future and actually I only a couple of days ago put um, a thread up in the Australian Knitters I think it's called the group on Ravelry I put a little thread up there just asking people about their favorite um, yarn for color work that you can source in Australia or New Zealand, Australia, and because a lot of colour work that I have done has been using Scandinavian yarn, and I really like to know if there's anything in this part of the world that will be uh, similar, because there is a lot of super fine merino, no, and there's a lot of super wash yarn. I have used the white gum wool for colour work and that's not super wash treated it's super fine merino but it still works really well for colour work haven't tried the DK weights so that might be something that I'll do um, and I have used a lot of different yarns from Australia for colour work but mostly they are super wash treated and they work fine but I just really enjoy those non super wash yarns for colour work because it really evens things out and um, yes I really enjoy enjoyed using the Roma and uh, yes if you have any ideas of non superwash yarn from Australia or New Zealand or something that I can at least get hold of um, in a yarn store down here um, let me know I'm, I'm always curious to know about new yarns and what different yarns are suitable for, for and what other people enjoy using um, certain yarns for what else have I been finishing? Because I have finished quite a few things. Well, last time I worked on my Wednesday day of socks. And they are now complete. I can't quite remember. I think I had split the tube last time. These are part of my Tough Socks Naturally experimenting. This here peachy colour is a 100% Wensley Dale that is dyed by Fine Fish Yarns. This was a, a present to me from a podcast viewer. What I did was that I needed one long tube, about half a meter, a bit longer than that, and then I cut it in half and put in toes, and then I did afterthought heels by cutting in a heel. Since this is 100% Wensley Day, which is a long staple length yarn and uh, wool which makes it hardier than anything that has a shorter staple length, like merino. But it still doesn't have um, any additional strength in it, like nylon, which is the whole point of the tough socks, naturally. But I found that it was quite a thin yarn, and with my um, stitch gauge, I was a little bit worried about that I had made them too loose to be very strong for the heels and toes. So I... Um, held the yarn double with a um, Black Yarns Lioness, which is a, I think it's 50-50 wool and linen yarn. I held them double for the toes and for the heels. And I had, there were just some leftovers I had, and just at the last maybe five rows on this heel, I had run out of the green, which is the emerald colorway, I think, and I had to use some of a, a grey in the same yarn base but a different colorway which I think it's the onyx um, so just like a tiny bit at the end there that turned on really turned out really well and I had my daughter try them on for a photo and they're, they're my size so they're quite um, big on her but um, they came out really well I'm really happy with them so I add them to my all natural no nylon socks and um, see how they wear I think with the linen in the heels and the toes the heels and toes will wear really well then I don't know about the foot but um, we'll find out and now um, I have a special little collection of all my no nylon sock yarn oh, I'll show you so this is my little box of uh, no nylon sock yarn. There's some indie dyed yarn in here and there's some commercial yarn. There's some that are all wool. 
There's some with knitable fibering, some with silk, and different braids, some with linen in them. Just a nice selection of different no nylon sock yarn that I'm excited to be using. And now they're all falling down. <laughs> so I had finished one jumper. I finished some socks and then I cast on another jumper and I think I showed you that I had only just cast it on last time and that was a worsted sock arms sweater which is a pattern by Stephanie Lotton. I have knit one for my youngest daughter and one for my eldest daughter. I might insert photos of them. And I also had the pattern for the adult size, with the two separate patterns, the children's sizes and the adult sizes. So I had both of them. And um, I had been wanting to use some of my own hand dye DK weight yarn. I have some dandy DK from Nundle Woolen Mills that I dye. And I wanted to try it out myself. It's always fun to knit with your own hand dyed. And I, I feel like it's something that I need to do more. Because I want to show what my yarn looks like um, when it's knitted up and it's it's always it's a, I really enjoy that when other dyers do that when they show samples of their hand dyed yarn so it's something I want to do but then I have the not the problem but then I also have a lot of stash that is from other dyers and commercial yarn and things that I really want to use so I was trying to come up with combining something from my stash that I wanted to use with something that was new and that I had dyed. And with um, the worsted sock arms sweater, you use one main color for the body and then a, a second color for the sleeves. And I thought, well, I can use some hand dyed for the sleeves and then see in my stash if I can find something that is enough for the main color of the body and what I had and I, I probably spoke about this last time but I had some about 800 meters of a super fine merino from Bendigo woolen mills and on the tag it said unlevel I think so it's um like a seconds I think but I don't know what unlevel means but it was um not quite enough to make a full garment for myself. I probably bought it thinking that I'd make something for one of my daughters. But I have recently made something for both of them and really I want the jumpers for me. <laughs> so I thought, okay, well that's good. 800 meters will be enough for the body of, of this jumper. And then I'll add some of my own hand dyed for the sleeves. And I had cast this on last time. And I have now finished it. <clears throat> so here it is. So this is the Bendigo Superfine Merino and this is my hand dyed Dandy DK and this is the Pop colorway and it has that same pink as this Sweet Pea colorway from Bendigo Woolen Mills. Um, as you can see I then I did both colors on the sleeves. I, I wound up to 100 gram, grams gains for the sleeves but then I thought Oh, when I had finished the body, I still had maybe 100 grams left of this main colour. And I thought, I really want to use as much of it as I can. But I also want to use my hand dyed. And I, it wasn't enough to make the whole jumper in the same colour. So what I did was that I, I need 50 grams of my own hand dyed on one sleeve and then 50 grams on the other sleeve. And then I made a pearl and then I continued with that main colour um, and I, I really like how that came out it, it makes it gives it a bit of interest to have the hand dyed but um, it's quite enough and I'm happy that I was able to use more of this um, main colour because I didn't really have any other plans for it and um, yes it's 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 actually one of the things that um, I've been trying to do this year, and it was not a conscious thing. It's just how it happened, and it just um, really what seemed like a good thing to do and a natural thing to do is to 
use more of my old stash that it's all beautiful things and they've been sitting waiting for me to make them into something these skeins into some knitted items and I have a lot of um well I partly I have a lot of single skeins um but I also have a lot of of lots of um yarn that were maybe enough for a baby cardigan or a child's jumper and now my children are growing and I've had a stash for a while so now I don't have enough yardage to actually make something for them but I don't really want to break it up and, and making smaller things and I'm not really doing um, a lot of cows and hats and things anymore because at the moment we have so much of that and I don't really have anyone in mind to give those items to so I'm trying more with garments and socks because they're things that I actually use so I'm trying to do th things like this where I use some nice old stash but combining it with something that's new and fun and hand dyed and just combining commercial and hand dyed old and new and um, just making smaller quantities of yarn go further I guess by um, mixing it up with something else and Yes, I'll, I'll, some other of my projects that I'm working on and have finished are also things where I'm just trying to use things that I have, but I'm also wanting to use new things. So I'm mixing it all up. I'm not doing only knitting from stash and I'm not doing only new things and getting rid of my old stash. So yes, that's how it's all ended up um, being the theme for this year, I guess, so far. I'm really happy with this one um, as you can see it's a little bit uneven in the knitting here this is when you split for the sleeves you knit back and also you have, you have to do purling because you're knitting flat and especially in yarn like this that has very defined stitches because it's super fine merino it just my pearl rows are, I don't know if they're looser or tighter but it just gives me a bit of an uneven fabric um, quite different to where I knit in the round I think so I try to block it out but it doesn't really work but when I wear it it's it's okay but I think I don't want to avoid doing things because I don't have the skills to do it in a neat way because I guess it's practice but I do think if I'm going to knit in the flat um, I have to use yarn that will hide my <laughs> uneven tension a bit better um, so, but I do really love this pattern I really like the magic of when you put in the sleeves and how it all just comes together and looks really neat and great so that was another jumper and then another thing I th had I started this last time I think so they are some hand spun socks and I have completed them. It's one of them and there's another one. So this was some of this was some of that stash that has been sitting around for a while. These are part of my um Aussie dye sock along um projects. These are made out of some fibre from Waiting for the wheel from Victoria. So these are my Victoria entry to the knit along. And I had purchased a braid of fiber. It's a wool nylon. I purchased it um, in Bendigo at the Artisan Market in maybe 2016, 17. And then while well after that, I spun it up. I never hope plied it. I um, figured out. So it's a Navajo ply, three ply, chain plied, um, wool, nylon yarn. I had two 50 gram balls that I had um, spun in a way so there were some gradient from a, a yellow to green to blue. And I think I had about 38 stitches 
and I need to run maybe a 2.75 millimeter needle. I think all of those details are of my Ravelry pages. I forgot to say that in my last episode, but I don't put a lot of links to my projects in the description box or in show notes. But everything that I am working on, anything I have made, um, are in my project pages on Ravelry and on Rose Hip Chic there. So any, you can find all the information there. If there's anything you want to know but you can't find the information, please just send me a message and I'll do the best that I can to answer any questions. But that's them. I'm super happy with them. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you later on that I have a new pair of hand spun socks um, started now. So, <coughs> excuse me, that's my second project for the 2019 Osudaya Sock Along. Two states out of the eight for the year. Super happy with them. Okay, and then I have a few things that I have been working on. I think it's only one of the things that I had started last time. And I have one finished sock of the, I think they're called non Euclidean. I'm not really sure. Um, they are a pattern by Sarah Jordan, Sarah someone. And these are part, they're both part of the 2019 Osidaya Sock Along. This yarn is dyed by Dying Dream in the ACT. Oh no, I had not started these last time. Last time I showed you I had just received the yarn. Um, yes, I had just received the yarn for these last time. Let's see. Here it is. It's from Dying Dream. So I just received this and it was so happy and fun. I just wanted to make a pair of socks straight away. So I decided to cast on of socks and I did them on a nine inch circle I'll show you I have the other socks started so this is how I knit them from the cuff down on nine inch circulars and I purchased this non Euclidean or what pattern is called I had purchased that uh, because um, there's another knit along happening which is the lots of socks cow um, I'll link to that in the description box below. It's, I think, hosted by Paper Daisy Creation. I think that's Lisa Ross. She's a pattern designer. And she's doing this really big uh, sock knit along. And there's a few designers that are sponsoring the knit along. So if you knit any of, of their sock patterns, their sock designs, you can enter them into this knit along. So this is one of those designs. Um, and this design has a bit of a different heel construction. And I've, I've have these stitch markers on here because I want to be able to um, do my second sock the same way. It's a bit similar to the what is that one called? The I can't remember what the other one is called, but I have made a pair for my daughter. I'll insert a photo maybe. And the name of it it's a bit similar but this one the other pattern has like a rib going down here in this triangle that you create with increasing stitches this one is just a, a, a plain stockinette then some short rows and you continue on on the foot so I have that and I have continued on the second one so yes these are both um, an entry in the lots of socks cow and also in our ongoing um, Aussie dye knit along, sock along. And they're oh, so bright and happy. I really, really enjoy them. I think I'll have enough yarn left to make something for um, one of my girls that will enjoy some rainbow um, socks as well, I think. So that's happening. What else is happening? Oh, and then I'm making something for another knit along. And this is a knit along that I have participated in 
every year since it started. And this is, that's the um, color work mitten knit along. So this was this is a knit along that was started by Claire or Corinne. I think she calls it's her real name that she's now changed back to or um, calls herself. Uh, she used to have the Northampton Northampton Knits podcast, I think it was called. But she is, and you probably know this, the Wood Thistle um, yarn shop and podcast. And so this is the fourth year we're doing this knit along, and I think the hashtag is TWT the Woolen Thistle Mitten Cow 2019. I think it is, and. Of course, I wanted to participate again because I made three other pairs of colorwork mittens for the three previous years. And have I used any of them? I don't think so, but I really enjoyed making them. And I thought, okay, I don't really use mittens. Um, it does get cold here. Actually, I had a question about that on one of my podcast episodes. That does it really get that cold where you are that you need woolen jumpers and mittens? And yes, it does. It does get cold. It does not really. We don't get snow. It doesn't get cold enough for snow. But in winter, we do have very wet, cold weather, and our houses are not at all built and insulated the way they are in Europe, or at least in Sweden, where I grew up. So um, it could be quite cold overnight. It can be around zero degrees overnight. And some days it stays quite cool all day. Other days you can have a cool night and morning, but it will still get up to 10, 15 degrees in the middle of the day before it starts cooling again. So um, most of the times it doesn't stay cold long enough or during the day that you need to rug up really over during the day. It's more mornings and evenings, I'd say. Um, but I don't, maybe if I, maybe if I rode my bike to work or if I was, you know, walking a dog or something, I would have more of a need for mittens. But I don't really, I'm not really, I guess, active outside early in the morning or late at night that I need to have those things. We do go skiing. We have a, um, ski mountain sounds a bit more than what it actually is, but we do have a mountain close to where we live is about an hour's drive and we do go there in winter and up there at that altitude it's cold enough for it to have snow and there's some toes and you can go skiing um, so we do need some beanies and things for that um, but mittens are not really hand knit mittens are not really ideal for skiing or being in the snow I think maybe I'm wrong but we do have ski gloves that we use when we're up there, so don't use hand knit mittens there. We do use a lot of cows and beans, and I think we all have at least two or three each of those. So at the moment, we don't need any more. <laughs> but anyway, I haven't really used any of the mittens that I have made. Some of other colour work mittens that I have made, I have given away as presents. Um, but I just, I thought, I can make... I can allow myself to make one pair of colour work mittens a year just because I enjoy it so much and what better reason is there or time of the year is there than when this knit along is happening. So that's this knit along will be my annual mitten making time I think. So this year I decided to make um, a pair of signet mittens and these this pattern is Again, this is something from I had in my library, not in my stash, in my library for a long time. It's an ebook that has a lot of different mitten um, designs. It's by two Swedish um, girls, ladies. Um, made one pair from that book before, but I thought I have this fantastic resource, so really I should make more mittens from there and not um, go off and look for new patterns. So I decided to do the singing it. And I wanted to use some special yarn. And this was going against anything that I had thought at start. My 
thinking first was to use some uh, Jameson Shetland wool or to use some Rauma phenol or something more traditional uh, commercial commercially dyed yarn but then I have had these skeins in my um, stash since I did a a swap I think it was an Instagram giveaway that I was lucky enough to win it, uh, by Arctic knitting Emily and um, we decided to do a swap as a part um, of my giveaway package I guess and I think these were the giveaway prices these are some Manos silk blend Let's tag so I had two 50 gram balls of these and they're 135 meters per 50 gram so they're about a DK weight and I have not, just not known what to do with them. I think I have the oxygen and patina colorway, maybe. I've not known what to do with them. Um, I wanted to use them together, and I wanted to use up most of them. And, you know, they're, they're a silk and wool, so they're nice and soft. I have had some different cowls in mind to make from them. I thought if I was going to make a hat, I wouldn't use all of it. I was thinking a cow, but I couldn't really find a pattern that would mix them together in a way that you know, they, that it would look how I wanted it to look. So they've just been sitting in my stash waiting for the right thing. And I went through my stash and I got a few skeins out that I thought, no, it's time to actually make something out of these. And then when I was looking through this ebook that I had had with mittens and doing different searches, advanced searches on Ravelry. I found someone who had used these um, this yarn for a pair of signa mittens, and I thought, well, I should do that. It's it's meant to be. I'm joining this mitten cow. I have this yarn. I need something to do with them, and I have the ebook. It's just all meant to be. So I cast them on, and I was going to use, I think. This is the main color and this is the contrast and I did that and I, I, I started uh, but I also needed another a third contrast color and the best thing that I could find where do I have them was some of my 20 gram minis in the single ply merino that I have this a part of my I think it's a dirty rainbow kit I have a few of them up on Etsy. So these are two of the colours. Um, and I, I was thinking to use these because they're a single ply. And that's the same as, as these ones. They're a single ply. I didn't have any DK weight. I only had these. They're fingering weight. So I decided to use them um, doubled up. Um, so that's what I did. Then when I, I started making the mitten, I was going to have that purple just in the little bit of contrasting here and I'll insert a photo it's not the best photo but you can see that then up in the main part of the mitten that um, variegated blue and the solid blue they just muddled together there was not a, a good enough contrast for them to work together you couldn't see the color work really because this skein has some of this same blue in it so they were just mixing up too much so I ripped back and decided to use that variegated blue just here in in the cuff and then use the the purple mild um, the two skeins together as the main color color and then the light blue as the contrast and um, yes it's it was not at all what I was planning from the start it's just what happened because I had started and I just wanted to make these mittens um, and I think I mean they need a bit of a, a wash and a block I have one without the thumb and you can see how the marling works with the two different the purple and the pink how it makes it sort of a variegated yarn um, I did have to because I don't I, can't, I don't know if it's written for fingering weight or DK weight but my row gauge was just, I had two, I just, uh, how did 
next to it. The mitten ended up being too long if I completed the whole chart, so I cut out like one repeat like that before I started the, the creases. So I've done that one. I'm not doing the thumb yet because I'm working on my second knit and I have that much of that one. And I just want to make sure that I have enough yarn. I don't have a lot left of my own hand dyed, so I want to complete the body of, of this mitten, the hand of this mitten, before I, I make the thumbs because I might have to come up with some alternate way of making the thumbs so that I have enough yarn. So that's those. So they're the signamids and I in a way really just want to finish them so I can see what they look like when they're blocked and ready. So I think I'm not really sure how long the the knit along goes on for but it started on the 22nd I think of February. And it might be until the end of March. That's when it normally happens. Um, so also, um, that was what I was going to mention. With this, it was the same thing um, as with my worsted sock arms jumper. I used some nice old stash that really needed to become something. And I used some new of my hand dyed yarn. And mixing them up to make sure... That I use up my stash but I also get to use some of my nice new hand dyed yarn and I have just really been enjoying making things like that and I have two more projects that I'm working on one of them is a jumper because I had finished two jumpers I really needed another one I can't remember if I actually I cheated a bit and cast this on before I had finished the other ones I know that it took me about two weeks to weave in the ends on my jumpers um, but I did it in the end. <laughs> um, did I talk about this last time? I can't remember. I think I showed you last time that I had got this in the mail from Koa Girl Collective from Nicole. She had given me one of these. This is her myrtle uh, base. It's a uh, kid mohair and silk. Uh, it's a lace weight and this is the high tea colorway. And she had she had given me one of these in a swap that we did before Christmas and I was going to um, use it with a skein that she, another skein that she gave me for a hat or something but then I was looking at different jumpers and I was in particular looking at things to make from my whole scarm in the coast base which is 55% wool and 45% cotton and I, I have quite a few of these that I got from SD Stash a while ago now. This charcoal one is the one that I had the most of. It's I had <clears throat> or I have three cakes of it. And three cakes. This is a very um, tightly spun yarn, and I think it blooms quite a lot after you wash it. Um, so this is a fingering or a light fingering, but three cakes of this is about a thousand meters which should be enough for making a garment for me um, I, I know with the one they have one that is 100% wool and that blooms quite a bit but I don't think the one that has the, wool, the cotton in it as well will bloom that much but um, certainly I had a look on Ravelry and I saw other people that had used it for garments and I figured this should be enough for me for a garment three of these and I found the Magnolia sweater by Camille Lavard. She's a Danish designer, I believe. And I think the Magnolia sweater was in the Line magazine, maybe. I think it's been in the magazine a while ago. And um, that's using a wool, fingering wool, and a lace weight um, mohair. So I had one of these, and I had these. And I thought, oh, I could probably use them together. And I, I had a look at Nicole's shop and she had another one of these. So I purchased another one of these. So I had two. So I'm using the high tea with the charcoal held together. And I did a little swatch. Do I have 
already using different um, needles because I thought with this one I really need to wash my swatch and everything because of how the whole yarn might um, change its um, appearance quite a bit with washing. So I did that, figured out stitch gauge and what needles to use and everything and I cast on the magnolia. I've only done this basically I've done the short race on the back <laughs> and then now I've started doing the increases for the yoke but you can see how beautiful with that um the high tea um colorway in this uh, mohair has sort of a really really light minty gray in a pink so it has the shift of those colors in it and then just with the charcoal as the base really pretty so I, I hope I'll have enough of that I think I have 800 something meters of the mohair and I'm just going to make the sh sleeves shorter I think if I don't have enough so again I'm using something commercial that I had in my stash for quite a while it really needs to become something because it's beautiful yarn I wanted to use it just haven't found the thing to use it for. So I'm using that together with something that is new and exciting and hand dyed and just yes, putting it together and finally it's becoming something and it's really exciting to knit it and um, use the yarn. And I'm excited about um, the garment at the end. It's going to be something a bit different to what I have in my wardrobe already. So lots of fun, lots of fun. And then I have one last thing that I only just cast on today and they are a pair of socks. So I had finished a pair of hand spun socks and I thought it was so much fun to use my hand spun and I know it is, it just I don't know why I don't use it more often. Probably because I just don't know what project to use my hand spun for. So I was really excited that uh, about using hand spun and I wanted to get some more hand spun out of my stash to use so yesterday I was going through my stash I actually got a few things out of my stash um, that I just thought no this these are things that I don't think I will use I can come up with things to use them for and I can use them but really I would probably prefer to use something different a lot of cotton yarns a lot of things that like the baby items stuff that I just don't make anymore so I've put them aside in a big bag I'm looking at it now and I'm going to either donate it to a school maybe I know that like the cancer council they have a craft group they might want some yarn and um, I might go through it one more time to see if there's anything that I would actually use or maybe something that my girls would use for something I don't know but I think in reality it's just going to go away to somewhere and donate it to somewhere because I have enough of other things anyway. But I was doing that and I was going through all my hand spun and reorganizing things so I have more of an idea where things are, what I can use for sweaters and what I can use for socks and things like that. I was sort of sorting through indie dyed and commercial and like my no nylon sock yarn and my nylon sock yarn just going through everything so I, I more have an idea of what I have even though I have everything up on my Ravelry um, stash pages it's just good to see it sometimes <laughs> so I went through the hand spun and I found a skein that's been sitting there for a long long time so back when I started um, spinning I was given a full Corridale fleece and this fleece I I washed it and I dyed it in batches and um, then I spun it. I still have some left that I have not spun yet but I did a bit of spinning of that and I had a skein that I had uh, spun a strand of a like a light yellow that I had dyed and a strand of or apply of a light green so it was sort of like a tweedy mild look yarn quite a thin 100% corridor from that I spun from this fleece 
and then so that was about 10 years ago when I had only just started spinning and then maybe five years after that I over dyed it with some more fun vibrant colors but I didn't know what to make with it even though I really enjoy the colors it was really fun and bright I just did not know what to do with it because it was quite coarse and not something that I could use for a beanie or anything around the neck or anything like that and I didn't have enough of it to make something larger and I thought I always thought it's a two ply and has no nylon it won't be suitable for socks but then yesterday I thought no it's more suitable for socks that might wear out than it is for just sitting in my stash and not being anything so here are the skeins so I I made two cakes out of the yarn, so there it is, and I have cast on two socks. I'm not really sure what, it's very thick and thin, so this is like just when I started spinning. Very thick and thin, uh, I don't know, it's not loosely plied, it's not over plied, um, but it is quite thin. Uh, I mean, it's quite uneven, and um, I just was not sure if it's a sport weight or DK. It's probably a bit of everything in here. Um, so what I did went to, I didn't know how many stitches to cast on, basically. So what I did is just I cast on until I feel the needle and made it look like it, similar to what it looks like when I do a fingering weight on 56 stitches. And I ended up with 48 stitches, I think, in the end. So we'll just see. We'll just see what happens. I think it's quite exciting, and I think I have quite a bit here, so I probably have more than one pair of socks. So that's the last project that I have to share with you. Um, I do have something that arrived in the mail. Oh couple of things. I don't think I had shown you that cola girl. Okay. Anyway, when I ordered, oh, I hadn't. Oh, when I ordered my the myrtle mohair for my um, magnolia jumper, yes, I had not shown you that yes, uh, last time. I forgot. So I ordered that, and uh, Nicole also had a skein of her tweed yarn her dapper um this is the whole green colorway and she had one of these and i actually snapped that up because i had previously purchased two other colorways in that because i really like tweed yarn and originally i was going to make a shawl out of these two together but i have just not i've stopped myself every time i thought about casting it on because i've, I've been thinking will i really use that shawl is it really something that I need in my wardrobe and I want it to be something for me not something that I give away for a present and then I thought maybe I'll make a tea but I wasn't sure how to combine two quite contrasting colors in a short sleeve top so then I thought well if I have three maybe it will be easier to combine to combine them together to make an actual garment for myself so that's another plan and then Nicole was so lovely and she included a skein for a prize for our um, knit long the Aussie dye sock along so she included this uh, swagman sock yarn um, which is 85% Australian merino 15% nylon and this is the billabong colorway it's beautiful um, browns and yellow and blue sort of like a, a warm, almost like a pinky colour to it. So that's added to our prices for the knit-along. So yes, that was something that arrived since last time. And then at a D stash, I couldn't help myself and I purchased some no nylon sock yarn. I purchased some of this Mondium, the Portuguese. This is sort of at the moment it's a bit popular at the moment I think it has a lot of this yarn base in this company this is Portuguese 
uh, non superwash fine Portuguese wool. I know they use this quite a bit in um, I don't know, it's lining. I know a few designers that um, they like to use this wool and not use nylon and I thought these were quite fun and I had been given one of these before in the blue colorway and I thought those two might be fun together and those two might be fun together I just it was a D stash it's not something that I can get hold of in a shop in Australia so when you find it a D stash it's just a good way of trying more of those yarns that are not easy to get hold of here. So I've added those to my no nylon sock yarn pile. And I think that's all. Oh, another thing was that Nicole included in her um, in her parcel to me this um, flyer for the Fibre Feast South Australia. So I thought I'd show you that. If you're in Adelaide or around there in South Australia, the Fibre Feast is um, on on the 16th of March from 10 to 4 in St. Agnes. Look it up. I think it's it sounds like a super event. Um, you can find information by going to www.fibrefeastsa.com. So check that out if you're in that area. I think that's all I have to share with you with things that I have been working on, which is masses. Oh no, actually, I have been doing one more thing. I have been doing spinning because not only am I casting on more hand spun yarn for more socks, I've also started spinning again. And I have not been spinning for a long time, a long, long time. And I wanted to make more hand spun socks. Um, and I had this beautiful fibre in my stash, which is Elfin Wolle, and it is a 67% superwash merino and 33% nylon. And if I am not completely wrong, this was a present from Shara, Shara made one year. So this is half of it, the other half is currently being spun on a bobbin. So what I did was that I halved it all lengthwise. And then from each half I made about 10 smaller strips and I'm just spinning them from start to end one after the other. So that's a bit exciting. And that was all the craft and things that I have been working on. As I said at the start of the episode, I have had um, for different reasons some more time um, to do knitting and other crafting. Um, and I can see on the time that I've still spent a lot of time here, even though I decided to go straight into the knitting. Do I have anything else I'd like to share with you? I don't really think much has happened um, in the last couple of weeks that is anything worth sharing on, on this episode. I'm just really happy, as always, to sit down and share my wool and craft, yarn, knitting, all those things with you. I was hoping that I had had some time to do sewing, but I guess that I had, again, as normally is the case, I have just been, just um, spending time knitting. Um, but, you know, it doesn't matter. Whatever, you know, um, is enjoyable at the moment, what makes me happy, um, that's good. It's good stuff. And I'm so happy that I have two new jumpers <laughs> when it finally cools down. As you can see, I've been struggling with the heat a bit today, but it, it's all it's all good. I enjoy enjoy this um, anyway. But I think that's all. I don't really have anything else to share with you. My Etsy shop is back open again. It was closed for a little bit, but it's back open if you're looking for hand dyed yarn. And I'm not sure when I will have my next dyeing day or dyeing week <laughs> um, it's, it's quite a bit up in the shop at the moment and um, whenever I'm able to I will add some more stuff there if you have anything you want to see me dye up any more of any particular colors or I mean I'm always happy with custom orders I'm always happy to dye up um, specific 
things that you like. But if you have any ideas of, of or fun themes or anything like that, let me know, uh, and I'll, I'll take those into consideration. But that's all for this time. And yes, any questions, any comments, please put them below in comments or send me a message. Um, please hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you want to watch more, hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm so happy to have all of you here on my channel. And um, that's all for this time. So until I see you next time, take care. Thank you for watching. Bye.